Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Uncle Matt's Cookery Lessons. We're off to Australia to make dim sims. Hello, in this video I'll be making the Australian dim sims, which is like Chinese dim sums, but they're Australian. <laughs> and I want to thank a uh, long time viewer of my channel, Yen, for, um, for giving me this idea. And also Yen, just, just people might want to say well done Yen, because he's been on a very strict diet and he has lost a ton of weight. And um, it must be hard because he still watches my videos and you cannot argue ever that my videos will be considered good for diet. So anyway, yeah, no, I really appreciate your continued support and uh, yeah, this one's for you, mate. All right, there's some pork belly that I bought. I'm making my own mince for this, but obviously you can just buy shop-bought mince, not a problem. Uh, I just dicing that up into cubes, going in my freezer for a little while to get really cold and my mincing attachments for my KitchenAid are also in the freezer, getting nice and chilled. While they're cooling down, this is Chinese leaf cabbage. I'm not sure what you call it, where you come from. It might just be called Chinese leaf cabbage. It's really nice. It's sort of soft. You can actually ha eat that raw. It's really nice in a salad. But you can also cook with it. So I've just chopped up half of one of them, nice and small. And that's me mincing the now really chilled pork belly to make a beautiful mince. The full recipe for this will be on Uncle Matt's CookeryLessons.com. Go and check that out over there. So there's uh, some, gar um, sorry, the ginger that I peeled and minced up there with some garlic. Now into a big bowl, let's combine these flavors together for this filling. So the cabbage went in, some salt, that's white pepper, Chinese five spice, some soy, and then a bit of sesame oil. That's kind of like flavors that I associate with Chinese food. And uh, just give that a good old scrunch up together. I saw one recipe, they call them to ducken and it's turkey, duck and chicken all mixed together but I've just gone pork and I think the original ones were done with mutton or lamb. So I just to taste and make sure you got your seasoning right, cook off a little bit and obviously that was rather delicious. So in the fridge that's going to go for a little while just to sort of get those flavours acquainted. Making the pastry, so that's hot water, just hold that jug still Uncle Matt, it's, don't know where that was off to. So you need hot water with a bit of salt into a plain or all purpose flour and just mix that with a spoon until it sort of gets to a all clumpy and you can't really do much more with that. So in with your hand for a couple of minutes. It, it doesn't look right, does it? It looks like it's all wrong, but don't worry. You persevere, you just get this on your work surface and you knead this for about 10 minutes or so. Um, I say, things vary. You know, you get measurements slightly wrong, humidity in the air, you might find yours is a bit sticky or a bit dry. Mine was a tad dry, so I got my hands wet just to sort of massage that into the dough. It's really tough, this dough. It's a bit like pasta, really. So it's just keep working. But if you find yours really like a sticky mess, just add a little bit of flour until after about 10 minutes or so, we have that lovely sort of smooth, elastic dough, which is a bit firm and responsive now. So it's all springy. So that's getting wrapped up. That's about half an hour after it's had a rest. Chop that in half. Keep half of it wrapped whilst you're working with it, otherwise it will get all dry and you won't be able to roll it out. So I thought, well, let's see if I can roll this out without flour. And I got, you know, doing all right, but it started to stick a little bit. So I've just, as and when I need it, a little, little bit of flour, just, and keep going. And you're gonna roll this basically really thin, as thin as you can. I got mine to, I don't know, like two millimeters, which would be even smaller than an eighth of an inch, you know, really thin. Now that's me get really pedantic for this one because uh, the recipes I've checked, it says you must cut 10 centimeters squares. Now, 10 centimeters is about four inches. Uh, whether or not that is absolutely essential, I don't think so. But I thought for the video, let's try to do it as properly as possible because there will be someone out there that wants to have a moan at me. There always is. Um, those trimmings I kept and later on, because I had quite a lot of filling left over after the pastry, I uh, just made some odd shaped ones and they were really lovely. So this is the technique 
This is how we build them. So th at this stage, this is very much like, I suppose what you say, a dim sum. Now, I am no expert in Chinese cookery, so please don't you know take me to task on this. This is an Aussie version. So you sort of bring that through. That looks nice. And then this is the Aussies go, now what I want you to do, mate, is uh, squeeze it till it's like a hand grenade. <laughs> sorry for the accent. Not sorry. And, um, yeah, that's it. That's the difference. They're all squished and elongated. <laughs> I love Australians. And now a quick word from me. Now in order to make these dim sims, I needed a new steaming basket. Well, I needed a steaming basket because I didn't have one. Now, once before, I used a company local to me because I really, really like to try to use as many local businesses as I can. The one in the town where I live is called thebigkitchen.co.uk. I reached out to them again, and what I've done is they've given me this. So I suppose you could say this is a paid promotion, but I really do like the company um, they are obviously local, they are also national and international. So if you are the sort of person that likes to go online and buy new kitchen equipment, why not have a look at thebigkitchen.co.uk. Um, I think pretty much anything you'll find in any of the really, really large uh, retailers or wholesalers, you will also find there. In a very, very difficult year through lockdowns, um, where so many businesses have struggled, they have clearly obviously really gone after the online market. So I think that they're also very, very proficient and organized in that way. And that's, a, that's, that's about as much of a um, praise I can give a company. They are really, really nice people and that's that. Okay, let's get on with these, making these dim sums then. All right, I'm back. So let's uh, use this wonderful basket, shall we? Now I wanna line each of the trays with a cartouche or a little disc of paper. So you can see me folding that in half and in half finding the center of it and a couple more folds. Then you just line that up with the edge and snip off where that line is. And when you unravel that, hey, presto, you have a little disc of paper, which will just hopefully stop these little dumplings from sticking to the wood. You never know. I tried standing them up and I thought, oh, there probably isn't enough room. So I'll lie them down on the sides. I've made another batch of them, so here we go. I've got my wok, and I think that's the best way to do this, because it's easier to get them in and out. Um, put them on there, the lid on. Make sure you keep topping up the water. You don't want it to boil dry. That was 15 minutes. They needed a few more minutes, I thought. So in total, those had about 17 minutes, and they're looking all right, aren't they? And this is the traditional way of serving them. You put a couple in a white bowl, and you smother them in soy sauce. And then you laugh as I try to use chopsticks. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to hand you back over to me for the tasting. Okay, my first experience of Aussie Dim Sims. They're really lovely. I'm rubbish with these though. I think you might find it easier with a knife and fork. All those lovely ginger and the five spices, soy, and that lovely steamed dumpling, which I think might actually be one of my more healthy dishes I've done. You can deep fry these, by the way, but I thought that was a bad idea. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video really soon. Bye.